honestly, I feel like women should not be told what to do, to be honest. So I think the government needs to stay out of it. I think it's something that a woman has to have her rights to make that choice and what's best for her. Um, it's not something that I think that should be politicized. It would be between a woman and her doctor and her God. So I don't see why politicians have or they don't have anything to do with this. And yet here we are, you know, still having to vote on this issue. Florida citizens and voters on their views on the importance of reproductive policies when it comes to health, reproductive health care access as their state Supreme Court ruled that the Florida Constitution does not protect the right to access abortion health care. It paves the way for a six week abortion ban, which essentially bans all abortions to go into effect while simultaneously allowing a ballot initiative for the fall on abortion access to go before the voters. Florida has been a critical access point for women living in states with near total abortion bans already in the South, with one in 12 abortions in the country taking place in the state of Florida. This ruling now creates an abortion desert in a huge chunk. Look at that. It's a, a third of the country, a quarter of the country. The decision by the DeSantis stack Supreme Court, he picked five of the seven justices, as increased urgency around that fall ballot initiative. It's now critical to restoring access, not just for Floridians, but for women all across the South. It is one of 11 ballot initiatives that will or are likely to go before voters in the fall. Voters have been energized by these issues so far since Dobbs was overturned. Just today, organizers behind Arizona's ballot initiative announced that they have obtained more than the required number of signatures for that measure, for their measure to appear on the ballot in November. Joining our coverage, President and CEO of the Planned Parenthood Action Fund, Alexis Miguel Johnson, Basil and Molly are still here. Um, Alexis, what's your Florida plan look like? First, for, for serving women, and second, we'll talk about the politics. Well, you know, as you as you indicated, it was a very kind of mixed decision yesterday to hear both that uh, the Florida Supreme Court has paved the way uh, for the six-week ban to take effect to devastating consequences for the patients of Florida. It is a significant population that gets access to care, and now the South, you know, essentially has been, uh, you know, restricted in, in access. And the idea that you would have to leave Virginia and go, go left all the way to New Mexico to get care, that's going to affect a significant amount of patients. We have obviously been preparing for this potential moment, uh, so we continue to work with our patient navigators to uh, support patients to get access out of state uh, at other clinics across the country. Uh, but I want to be clear: there's no there's no world in which uh, you know the the states that still have access were meant to absorb uh, you know 50 states of of, of patient care. Um, you know, and at the same time, to see that uh, the Floridians uh, protecting reproductive freedom uh, are able to have that really critical ballot initiative where the voters will actually get to decide uh, what freedom looks like in Florida is incredibly powerful, um, and it couldn't have come at a more important time. I mean, Alexis, on that, it has been a tectonic shift in our politics. It supersedes geography. It supersedes um, preconceived notions from pundits on how long an issue will remain resonant. That's why so many people got the midterm results wrong. Maybe a red wave, maybe a red lapping wave, maybe a red, you know, hiccup. There, there wasn't a wave at all because women and men, um, older voters and younger voters and voters in every region of, of the country understand that criminalizing abortion health care means women die. Um, what is your sort of analysis of how and whether Florida will be different politically? Well, as you said, it cuts across uh, demographics. It also cuts across uh, partisanship, right? I mean, here you have a state where a million signatures uh, signed these petitions, and about 200,000 of them were Republicans, as you saw mm. the, the very people that were interviewed in the clip, that, that this is a matter of whether or not we get to own our own health care decisions or whether the government owns the health care decisions. It's, it is really that pure and simple. And I think that we are going to continue to see what we have seen. Every time reproductive freedom has been on the ballot, uh, we have won. And I think it is so important for us to remind people, especially those people who think 
all of a sudden we're going to forget that our freedoms have been taken away. Some, you know, that all of a sudden we're going to be focused on on, on some other issue. Um, it is so fundamental to be able to control your own health care. It is so fundamental to be able to control your own freedoms, and that is not something that easily goes away uh, as 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 people consider the implications, because the stories are really. Uh, out there and people understand um, really what's at stake now. I don't think, Molly, everyone knows somebody who's impacted by criminalizing women's health care. Everyone knows somebody who's either needed to turn to IVF. Everyone knows somebody who's had a non-viable pregnancy and has lost their baby through tragic, horrific circumstances. And the idea that women like Amanda Zorowski are waiting in parking lots until they're septic is insane to just about everybody. Right. And also, this was never about serving women, right? This was never even about serving people. DeSantis did this six-week ban because he was running for president against right. Donald Trump, and he knew that Republican primary voters wanted it. And I would say that as we look at, you know, this ban, it, it is a moment here where Voters are going to go to the polls in November to vote on this referendum, and they're going to have lived in a state with no abortion, a state that historically was much more pro-choice than most states in the South. And so I do think it's going to be they are going to be really informed when they vote. And whether or not that makes Florida in play for Democrats, we don't know. Mm -hmm. But it certainly means that they understand really firsthand what's at stake. Hey everyone, MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.